You know what's better than doing donuts in a Hellcat? Doing donuts in a plane, like Krispy Kreme with the red light on. All glaze, no sprinkles. Here's how to do turns around a point. Let go! Boom! Hey, it's always great to ask yourself in the very beginning, why are you being asked to do a certain maneuver? It's going to help you better understand that maneuver and then understand how to execute it more easily. So here is no exception, but of course, turns around a point. The simple objective here is you want to know how you got to manage the aircraft differently and manage that energy differently based on what the winds are doing. So correcting for the winds and drift. That's what you want to learn how to do. It's always, in most situations, there's going to be some type of wind. So you want to know when you're making turns in that wind, when you're doing things for ground reference maneuvers and any other things like that, that you know how to correct for the winds. That's the main objective that you want to get out of this maneuver. Let's get into it. Lego, boom, you know the vibe, so check it. If you want to make everything easier for yourself, remember, whenever you ask to do any kind of flight maneuver, think about what are the primary things, or maybe one or two things that you can remember that's going to make the maneuver easy for you. So now that we have the why out of the way, you know it's all about correcting for the wind. Now ask yourself, what are two things that I can know about this maneuver that can help me get through it? And those two things to me are very simple. One, just because it's called turns around a point, do not become fixated on the point. Remember, aviate, navigate, communicate in that order. So navigating around this point, notice where that comes in. Navigate is the second word. There's something that comes before that, aviate. You want to make sure that you're flying the airplane and keeping the airplane at the proper airspeed and altitude. You want to aviate first. Everything you're doing in terms of your banks, in terms of your airspeed, in terms of your attitude are nice and smooth on those controls. Then navigating around that point is their second thing that you want to focus on versus you becoming fixated on the point itself. And then now you're losing altitude. Now your airspeed isn't right. Now you're going back and forth with the bank and everything's becoming uncoordinated. So always aviate, navigate, communicate in that order. So don't just remember those words because they rhyme and they sound nice bars, but also remember them in that order because that's the order you want to always do them in, even when you're being asked to turn around a point. So the whole objective here is to turn around a point, but you just don't want to become fixated on it at any cost. In aviation, you never want to become fixated on anything. If you're flying at night, you're visual, you never want to become fixated on a bright light. If you're flying into the daytime and say you're looking at an object, you never want to become fixated on that object. You always want to be scanning the horizon nice and slowly, getting a nice images of everything that's happening. You're coming in for, for a landing, you don't want to be fixated at a certain point on the runway. You want those that visual of the entire runway up all in your peripheral, everything working, looking at a nice clear sight picture, scanning, and then when you get down low and you get into that ground effect, baby, you're looking at, of course, down the runway. So you're always scanning, those eyes are always moving. You're never fixated on any one thing. So just always remember that. That is the key to executing this maneuver as smoothly as possible. So check it, that's the primary thing. It's two primary things. So that's number one, you never want to become fixated. Number two, all you got to simply remember is if there's a tailwind, I'm going to bank steeper. If there's a headwind, I'm going to bank shallow. That's it. If there's a tailwind, I'm going to bank steep. If there's a headwind, I'm going to bank shallow. If you remember those two things, you can get through this maneuver. So never become fixated on anything. And if there's a tailwind, bank steep. If there's a headwind, bank shallow. So that's how it's going to be your setup. That's going to be your mentality of the two primary things you have to remember. Let's get into that thing. Let go. Boom. Check it. You know the vibes. Before you execute any maneuver, you got to run that cast, baby. You got to do the clearing turns. You got to make sure your, your altitude is at the right altitude you want to be for this maneuver. And then, of course, you want to be in a safe area. You don't want to be around anything that can cause any kind of conflict. And there's two things here that can set you up for success. So after you run your cast, you want to be doing two other things that's going to set you up for success before you start to execute the maneuver as well. More than likely, your designated pilot examiner is going to ask you to pick an object to do the turn around the point. You want to pick something that's small, not something that's big. Conventional wisdom may tell you I want to pick the biggest thing out there. But remember, if you pick big and you miss, you're going to miss big. So you pick big, miss big, that's not a, that's a problem. But if you pick small, you miss small. Just like aiming at any kind of target in any kind of situation. The smaller the target, even if you miss, 
is still just a slight correction to get you back on course. So you want to make sure that you try to pick something small to do a turnaround point on instead of picking this massive object. So if you do fall off kilter and something goes wrong, it's it's a massive mistake that you have to try to overcorrect to get it back. So pick something, maybe two intersecting highways, and you're going to do a turnaround point right where they start to intersect. Maybe a small little object that's on the ground that's visible for you to see, but at the same time, it's not this big massive thing that you're trying to do a turnaround or point on. So that's one thing. The second key and the second tip is you want to do a wind check and get yourself a wind check before you do the maneuver to set yourself up properly because you would like to set this maneuver up starting with the tailwind. So remember those two key points. Always think about setting yourself up for success always be ahead of the aircraft. And this is part of your situational awareness is not only anticipating, but remaining two to three steps ahead of the aircraft at all times. And you do that by not, when you're going through your cast, you're getting your wind check, you're understanding what those winds are doing, and you're already going to anticipate picking a small object. So if you pick small and you miss small, you're still in a good position. Let's get into that thing. Let go. Boom. So let's just say you set that thing up properly, baby. You got your small point that you're looking at as a reference and you're getting ready to set your aircraft up. You're at the right altitude, right airspeed, all that stuff. Remember, aviate first, then navigate around that point. So after you set up your visual and you glance outside the aircraft, you're using your peripheral and you see what the, where the point is and you know you're a beam that point, then start that thing. And remember, you set yourself up where you're working with a tailwind first, which is going to make this a lot more smoother and easier for you as you go around that point. So you go around that point and you're glancing in and you start your bank. Remember, when you turn the aircraft, you use both your hands and your feet to, to do a coordinated turn. Just like when you walk, when you walk, your hands move and your feet move. You should be doing the same thing in the aircraft. You're getting ready to bank that thing. You know you're going to use some rudder too. So if you're turning that thing to the left, what are you going to do? left aileron left rudder at the same time giving it a nice smooth turn and smooth roll don't have to be anything overly exaggerated just keeping it nice and smooth and remember because you have that tailwind the wind is going to be pushing you it's going to be helping you pushing you around this point so that means that you're going to have to bank that thing a little bit steeper with the tailwind and remember that was one of the primary things we want to remember don't become fixated on the point and make sure if you're in a tailwind, steep bank, and if you're in a headwind, shallow bank. So you're starting off with that nice steep bank and you're just going around. Don't become fixated on the point. Glance at the point, glance back in the aircraft at those instruments. Make sure you maintain the, al the airspeed and the, al added, uh, the altitude. That's the most important thing. Altitude is maintained, airspeed is maintained, coordinated turns as you go around. And if you find yourself getting slightly closer to that point, then adjust. Remember, if you pick small and you miss small, it's small little corrections. But if you would have picked some big massive thing and missed big, it would have been a big clearing kind of error. That's why you want to pick small. And you just keep going around. Keep going around nice and smooth, making your adjustment. You're making sure you're keeping your distance, that same circle of motion around that point as you go all the way around. You get to the other side, as you start to make your way around, now you're going to be faced with the headwind. And in the headwind, you're going to have to make sure you do things a little bit more shallow. So if you were steeper kind of bank in a, and with the tailwind, you're going to be more of a shallow kind of bank with the headwind and make sure that you're giving yourself enough room because you know what that headwind is going to do as soon as you make that turn it's going to start helping you out again because you're going to be right back where you started from with the tailwind as you start to circle around that point think about it like this you in that hellcat you in the parking lot your girlfriend she's standing in the middle of the parking lot you getting ready to do donuts around her she got her phone now she recording she like what up what up what up and you circling around her when you circle around her and you doing donuts around her in that hellcat and you got that thing on the ground what you trying to do? You trying to keep your distance from her. If she's right here like, hey, hey, what's up? She all on IG live like, yeah, we up, we up, we up. And you spinning that thing around her. You want to, you don't want to get close to her and you don't want to get far away. You want to do the donuts nice and smooth around her. Same concept in the air. You're doing the same exact thing. Keeping a nice perfect circle around that point. Just like you're doing donuts around your girlfriend, baby. That's all you're doing. That's all you're doing in the air. Nice and smooth. There's no reason to do anything uncoordinated or be overreacting anything. It's nice and smooth with it. Make the small, simple corrections. Don't become fixated on that point. Tailwind steep. 
headwind shallow and you're good. Boom, another key tip here, one of the final tips. You wanna make sure that when you practice in this maneuver, that you practice it on both sides. Just like you like your food seasoned on both sides, you wanna make sure this technique that you got down for the turns around a point are seasoned on both sides. I'll give you an example how this can trip you up. If you're sitting in that left seat and you're looking at a point that's on your inside, it'll be a nice visual, easy to see. But let's just say the point is on the right side of the plane and you're sitting in that left seat. Now it may be a little, that visual may be thrown off a little bit. So you wanna make sure that you're practicing both sides and making sure that you can keep your distance. You can turn left around a point, you can turn right around a point, and you can make sure you keep your distance. Just because you're turning right, you're not gonna do anything any different than what you're turning left. You just wanna be cognizant and have that situational awareness of what you're doing. You're not gonna become fixated on the point, and you're gonna make sure that tailwind hit and headwind still apply, tailwind you're gonna go steep on, those, on that bank, and then of course with a headwind you're gonna go more shallow. Same rules apply, so don't get nervous if it's left or right, but just make sure you're practicing that because you want your food seasoned on both sides to keep that thing flavorful and nice, baby. Hey, don't forget to like this video, comment on this video, share this video, and subscribe to this channel. I am Donovan Batiste. Hey, this is Leadership Mindset a place where we can all come together and get free information about everything that you need to know to become a pilot. And if you're already a pilot, information on this channel can help you, of course, stay proficient. I love you one time. Hey, let go!